There's a big myth floating around on the internet world about chest and belly breathing. So I really want to clear up this misconception to help people. So the whole belly chest thing is very, very misleading and can be very bad and detrimental. So we don't want to be all belly. So when I see people put a hand on their chest and put a hand on their belly and they're like, okay, don't let your chest move all belly, then we're not getting any rib cage movement and we're not getting any chest movement. And the thing is, is our lungs sit underneath our rib cage. Our lungs are in there and our lungs expand with air. We need our rib cage to expand and move. So if you try not to move your chest at all, you keep your ribs in a really fixed position. And when this happens, it's going to cause back tightness and pain because we need to get those ribs moving. They need to be mobilized with every single breath. And for them to be mobilized with every breath, we need to have our rib cage move, which means our chest has to move. And I feel like this is what happened with the whole bad fat, good fat phase that was in the 90s. They didn't think the American population was smart enough to tell the difference between good fats and bad fats. So they just said, don't eat fat. All right, so they went into this fat-free phase, which we all know what happened with that. It led down a very bad road for health. So I kind of feel like breathing went the same way. Is it all chest or all belly? So let's take out the chest breathing and just get it into breathing belly breathing. I feel like this is simplifying it to the point as fat-free diets, which we know are bad. Okay, so let's differentiate the difference between good fat and bad fat and good breathing and bad breathing. I think you're smart enough. You can handle it. So when you breathe, I want you to place a hand on your chest and a hand on your belly. And I want you to inhale. You want to feel both the belly and the chest rise evenly. So if you prop your head up on a little towel roll or pillow, you can see what's going on. So we're getting both belly and both chest. The other misconception that I see is it ends up being all belly or all chest and not any back. So when we think about our ribs moving, our ribs have joints in the spine and joints here in the sternum. Okay, so our ribs are attached in our front and our back. So when our lungs fill with air, our ribs pivot on these joints. Okay, when this happens, it expands our ribs out. Okay, which expands our chest up a little bit and it expands our back a little bit. So when we get diaphragm expansion, our diaphragm expands all the way around. When you get this great expansion in the back, this helps your mid back feel awesome. We want our ribs to move in the back. We want those joints moving. Just like if you held your elbow at a fixed position all day, it would really hurt to straighten out your arm. So if you're all belly breathing and you never get any rib cage movement during the day, your mid back is gonna feel terribly stiff. So we need to get you moving and we need to get you moving a little bit with each breath. So go ahead and place a hand underneath your back right around the bottom of your rib cage, so a little below your bra line, and place another hand on your chest. Now inhale, feel your back, feel your breath expand into your hand on the floor. So chest rises a little, belly rises, and back expands into your hand. So hand here. So that way we know we're getting that rib cage movement. So let's go ahead and check and see. Did you feel your ribs expand out into your hand? So they expanded into the back, into the front, and we distributed all the love and air and pressure everywhere. So think about it as getting 10% down into your pelvic floor on the inhale, 10% into your belly, 10% into each side, 10% into your back, 10% into your chest. Okay, so we're just, we're spreading the breath out everywhere. We're mobilizing every body segment. We're getting our chest moving. We're getting our ribs moving in the front and the back. We're releasing our paraspinals. We're getting a little bit of stretch on those obliques and we're getting a little bit of belly movement. So we still have that breath directed down. So we get that natural pelvic floor diaphragm sink that goes on, but it's not all down. Okay, so it's not that moving your belly during your breathing is bad. So belly breathing isn't bad. Belly breathing is good when it's used in moderation with everything else. So belly and chest. 
So we need fats, okay? So just like fats, this is good fat, okay? So it's not an all or nothing approach, all right? We need that chest to move when we breathe for a correct function in our body. So give that a try. See if you get that equal expansion everywhere, back, belly, sides, and chest, and make sure you're not all neck and shoulders, and you're not all belly. We don't want to be going to extremes. So hopefully that will help clear up this myth about the whole chest versus belly thing and placing a hand on one and the other, because I feel like this doesn't establish correct function in the body. And we can handle the complexity of getting this right and establishing that great diaphragmatic 360 breathing pattern where we get awesome rib movement with every breath.